Hello, I'm Bob Toomey, and welcome to Around the Old Town, uh, Candidates Forum, whatever show you'd like to call it. Uh, with me today are two candidates for the selectmen for the town of Abington. Rick Collins on my right, Bob Manning on my left, uh, two uh, ac very active members in our community who have decided to run for selectmen in this election, which is sad day. April 30th. Thank you. April 30th, and I believe the polls are open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And uh, it's at, uh, is it going to be at the Emerald, Emerald Hall. Hall? Yeah, because the construction at the high school. Correct. Okay, so if you can get out and vote, it's important. This is an informal conversation, really, we're having. It's not a debate. It's not a, uh, you know, we're not going to be at each other's throats. Just basically give you an idea of what these candidates are about. So uh, I'm going to start, we'll start since Rob's on my, Rick's on my right, we'll start with Rick first, and then uh, we'll close at the end with Bob going first. So Rick, go ahead, please, and tell me. Uh, just about who you are and why you should be running for selection. Sure. Bob, thank you very much for organizing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Rick Collins. I live on Orange Street. I'm currently a member of the Abington Planning Board. Uh, I live with my wife and I have two children, Ricky, who is uh, going to be five in a couple of weeks, and my daughter, Rebecca, who is going to be turning one in June. Uh, my background is uh, I have two loves, uh, newspapers and government, and I've been happy to work for both. I spend a lot of time as a community reporter for uh, the Patriot Ledger and some other uh, associations. I also spent uh, five years up at the Massachusetts State Senate working for both uh, Senator Bob Headland and John Keenan. I currently work uh, helping uh, small businesses with uh, digital marketing and advertising needs. And uh, but one thing that's never really left me is my love of community and government and making sure that it's working well for everybody. So I've been had an extraordinary opportunity to serve on a planning board for the last two years. And it's given me a lot of insight into some of our needs in the community. And when uh, Selectman Franey announced he wasn't going to be seeking the seat, I thought it'd be a great opportunity for me to take some of this understanding of what our long term, -term needs are, how we can solve some of those issues and to, to run for the seat. And uh, I was pleased to see Mr. Manning running as well. I think he's uh, uh, someone who's done a lot for the community and a gentleman. And uh, I know we're gonna have some good conversation today. So thank you. Thank you, Rick. To my left is Bob Manning. Bob? Thank you, Bob. And I appreciate you and Alex putting this together today for us. Um, I too uh, have been a long-term resident of the town of Abington. I moved in here in December of 1992. Um, I have been on uh, the Board of Health for two terms. I've also done a lot of volunteer work. So if you talk about loves to me, it's service to the community, it's service to the public. And uh, for professionalism, I've been uh, involved with the Massachusetts Department of Revenue for over 33 years now. And uh, I'm currently still working with them, looking forward to my retirement in seven years, hopefully. Uh, I, believe in, I believe this town has had a lot to offer since I moved in. My wife and I, when we were home searching, um, we, we looked heavily in this town and the, the house I live on in 34 Orange Street, which is four doors down from my, my co-worker here, uh, <laughs> candidate, is, uh, was, was a house we fell in love with and we watched it for a year before we actually bought it. It took over 12 months for us to make an arrangement to buy the house. But uh, we've loved living in this town. I've loved service, serving this town. Um, I've been involved with the Boy Scouts in this town for a long time. I've been involved with the sports activities in this town for a long time. As I said, I ran for the Board of Health. One of the other things I'm very proud of is my work with Jack Bailey and the volunteerism of, of fundraising for the town and doing different fundraisers for the town. Uh, I was also a vice president of the Abington Citizen Scholarship Foundation, raising funds for the children of this town to get uh, college education grants from us. And so that was another program I was quite pleased to be part of and, and perform uh, in this town. So I'm really interested in helping this town the best way I can. I bring to the town my background of working in uh, the state of Massachusetts for over 30 years uh, in the tax department. Um, I have a lot of interest in how funds are expended in the town and, and why they're expended the way they are. And I look forward to trying to help this town in the future um, in whatever way I can. And that's my interest in running for selectman today. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, as I said, it's pretty informal, so I'm going to start, uh, since Rick started the conversation, I'm going to start with Bob with the first question, and we'll switch it back and forth. Um, do you support the Community Preservation Act, and if so, why or why not? Well, um, the Community Preservation Act is, is, a, is a good idea. Um, the thing about the Community Preservation Act that we have to understand is that other communities are already using it, and they're already partaking in it. So. 
in a way, uh, when you go and purchase, you do a house purchase and a portion of your excise tax is going to these other communities, I believe strongly that as, as much I know it, some people would consider it a tax. Um, I consider it a benefit to the town because the things we can use with that money are things we can help the town. So I am in favor of the Com Community Pre Preservation Act and uh, I'd like to I would like to hopefully see it passed this year. Again, my primary reason for that is, is that we should be taking advantage of funds that other towns are taking advantage of now. So right now, the town of Abington is providing for funds for other towns to do things in their town. We should be providing for ourselves. So yes, I am in favor of it. Thank you. Rick, uh, do, you, uh, do you believe in the Community Preservation Act? Why or why not? I do, and I'll, and I'll preface it by saying that we do ask our taxpayers and our residents a lot. That it, it's a tough vote to take the year after we do the school bond. Um, but when you look at it and what you get from the Community Preservation Act, I think it's something that residents really have to take a good, good, take a good look at. Um, the average cost to a homeowner is going to be about $50 a year, and what they're going to get from that is uh, dedicated money to fix our parks, to uh, restore some of our historical buildings which s keep falling into disrepair. It'll help us fix up our affordable housing units. It'll, uh, it'll do a lot for the community, and, and it's not just money that goes to kind of an untangible pot where you know it doesn't go for employee pensions, it doesn't go for raises, it goes for, it goes for things that we can visit and, and touch and feel, very tangible objects around town. And I think town residents, if they vote for it, you're gonna see um, a clear benefit from it right away. The other reason I like it is because essentially it gives us a somewhere between a 20 and 30 percent discount on the cost of all our projects because the town would receive matching funds uh, through the community preservation grants it effectively brings down the cost of doing a project in our community and it saves the taxpayers a little money on the long run as well so yes I will be voting for it on the ballot thank you Rick we'll start with you on this question would you support a charter school if one was proposed for Abington and if so, or if not, why? No, I will not. Okay. Uh, the reason is I understand why charter schools are an important option for some communities, and particularly for our communities where uh, the schools are failing their children. Um, you'll see these in a lot of uh, inner cities, a lot of gateway cities where the school systems aren't fantastic and kids don't have a choice and parents can't afford to send their kids to private school. However, what they do, while they, they, they're good in terms of allowing uh, schools to experiment and find out what you know, other ways of, of educating their children, it also drains resources from the public schools. So when you have a situation like Abington where we have a strong school system, where we have um, options in, in, in terms of a private school in town already, I don't think one is needed. I think if there was a charter school in Abington, it would just take away resources from the schools that we already have. Thank you. Bob? Um, I also am I'm not in favor of a charter school. In a town the size of Abington, I don't believe there's any need for it at all. Again, I agree with my co-candidate that the town of Abington school system is, is more than adequate enough to provide education in all levels in this town. And a charter school would just, as Rick's pointed out, would just take away assets from our schools, and we don't need that in this town. We have a great school system. It's, it's getting better every year because we're doing things to make it better every year. So I am not in favor of charter school. Uh, in the town of Abington. Thank you. Okay, the next question. What are your thoughts on bringing more business into Abington to fill vacant buildings? Recently, we were told that New England Art will be closing. What would you like to see go there? What can Abington do to build the commercial tax base? So do you want me to do one at a time? Or? Doesn't make a difference. Yeah, the general question is, what, what would you do to stimulate the economy here? Yeah, the, one of the biggest problems Abington's facing right now is, is commercial development. I mean, business in this town, we've had vacant storefronts in this town now. I, I think I could count off the top of my hand at least five or ten without even blinking an eye that have been built and emptied since they were, the day they were built. Uh, we also have property that sits undeveloped that was taken over by private concerns and have done nothing with it. Um, I, I don't think there's a there's a simple answer to say, oh, we'll just change the tax rate and we'll tax the business higher than we'll tax the individuals. Because when you look at the total dollar value of higher taxes on business and, and lower taxes on individuals, it doesn't balance out in the end. It's generally uh, an unfair way of making, making a decision to, to tax one and not tax the other. Um, Abington's had a very successful, um, so far, in maintaining the, the tax rate for both business and residences at the same rate. Um, as far as bringing new business in the town, 
Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, of tax discounts for a small town like Abington. I don't think we can afford to do things like tax, tax grants and stuff like that. Um, what we do maybe is sell the town of Abington for what it is, which is a residential community that can offer stores or businesses um, local business that will, will will support the local business, but we have to bring the businesses in that local people need, and it's really a uh, a balancing act of of what what is available versus what what will come into the town versus what are the needs of the town. And I don't believe we've really done a very good job establishing any type of short term, a long term review of what is really needed in this town and what we what we need to do to get those businesses to come to this town. So I, I believe. There is some work to be done to generate new business in this town, and I'd like to be part of that talk and hopefully stimulate something to help the town in the future. Thank you, Will. Rick, do you want me to read the question again? It's somewhat sure. lengthy. What are your thoughts on bringing more business into Abington to fill vacant buildings? Recently, we were told that New England Art will be closing. What would you like to see go there? What can Abington do to build the commercial tax base? There's really a couple uh, needs here. The first need is the town needs to figure out how it's going to expand its sewer system. Right now, we're at a moratorium in construction because we don't have any more space in our sewer system. We have a, a tentative agreement with the city of Brockton, but that apparently has been delayed for several years now. And the town doesn't yet have another option. And in the meantime, we're having to tell businesses who want to develop in this town or builders who want to build new homes in this town that they can't do it. So we have people who want to invest in Abington, who want to have commercial developments that, sorry, doors are closed right now. And so there, every time that someone opens up their residential property tax bill and they see that jump in, bro in property taxes, it's a direct result that we cannot, that we're essentially the biggest uh, real estate boom in the past 15 years is passing Abington by because we don't have the infrastructure to handle it. So that's the first thing that we have to resolve. The second thing is that we have to start working with some of our local businesses, find out what their needs are. If uh, do they, do we just not do a good job of promoting where the open space is? Uh, are there zoning needs that we need to change? Are there reasons why we're not seeing um, more development in our centers, which are very small, single story um, buildings when they could be, when a lot of the communities around us, we're starting to see multi-unit, multi-story mixed use developments. What are we doing? What could we be doing better? And that's what we really need to take a look at because the town of Abington, if it continues to re rely on its residential property tax rate, it's, it's not going to be, it's going to struggle to do what we need to do in the future. Thank you. Rick, we'll start with you. What do you think we should do with the north and center schools when they're closed? That's a great question. And I'm, I'm glad the town had the, uh, the board of selectmen had the forethought to put a committee together now uh, when be, before the schools are closed officially so we can start to look at this question. I think that's some good forethought. Um, I think a school like the Frolio, which I don't know what the future holds for it, but that's a, it's a historical building that we need to make sure that we're using it right in the future. So whether or not it's, it's administrative space, whether it's become senior housing, um, it's something that we need to preserve and protect because it's a really historic building for this community. Um, the same goes for the, the center and the north schools. They're old buildings. It's going to take a lot of money to rehab that I don't think the town has right now. So I think the town has to make a decision that, um, you know, we can go and, and talk to outside people and see what they would like to use it for. We can ultimately control uh, through a deed restriction, you know, what it, it's used for so that it doesn't become, you know, a, a gas station or something. But we can ask that it be turned into housing or can be turned into a community center or can be turned into some other uh, piece of, of real estate that's going to benefit this community. But um, I really like the fact that we're taking a look at this now. I think we have some needs such as some additional senior housing, uh, uh, housing for uh, the disabled. Um, so I think there's some great options that we can use these great buildings for. Okay. Bob, I'll, I'll um, repeat it. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Uh, I think it's great that the, the town has made a decision to look at this issue also. Um, having had my child go through the center school, and I remember that when computers first came out, we tried to wire the center school uh, to get some internet access to it, and you had to drill through 16-inch block to get the wire through one room to another, and it's not the simplest and easiest thing to do. 
but the buildings do have something to offer or they or maybe they don't but I agree with Rick that the town needs to be able to maintain control over what actually happens to these buildings I thought we've we've done a somewhat adequate job with the with the uh, renting out or leasing out to different collaboratives uh, to utilize it and stuff like that I'm not sure long term that's the answer um, I too agree with Rick where the I believe Abington is a uh, somewhat a senior community in some ways, shapes, or form, and does need to support a senior community with housing or additional housing. And I could see how we could do modularization of maybe one of these schools to make additional senior housing occur. Uh, again, it's something the town needs to look at um, and see what's best for the town. So um, I don't think there's an easy answer to say if we have two vacant buildings or three vacant buildings, they, could, they should be this or that. I believe it does take a committee, and I, I believe it does take time uh, as, as little or as much as it takes to do the right thing for the town. So I look forward to hopefully contributing to that in the future if I'm elected selectman. Thank you. Okay, Bob. Did you support the new school last year? With the tax rate approaching $20 per thousand because of the school, give us some ideas on how to stop the taxes from continually rising. Um, you know, A, to answer your question, yes, I did support the school. Um, I think the school was, a, was an important development. I thought we had missed uh, an opportunity several years ago when the grant, grant was over, over, uh, lost during a, a season of, of um, inaction by the town. So I was happy to find out that we uh, actually had voted the school in and, and are going to put the school in. I, I had concerns from day one about the school as to where we're going to get the money to pay for it not just to pay for the infrastructure, not, not just to pay for the school itself, but, but to pay for the infrastructure of the school. The anticipation of a new school brings, you know, high hopes for uh, the education uh, of our children in this town. And that I'm hoping that um, we, we, we can fund the school appropriately, uh, and I believe it's level funded to open up, to make sure the programs that the new school has to offer can be offered and give our children the quality of education they deserve. As far as bringing new money in the town to keep the tax rate down, um, again, I hate, to, I hate to use the word committee, but this, it's time that this town forms a committee to actually look at what's important to this town and, and how are we going to use our open spaces. We, I, I think there's a number of open spaces that could be utilized, and as Rick had pointed out, it's great to have all this open space to develop, but if we don't have any way to develop it, what are we going to do? So there are, there are a number of unanswered questions that we have to get answers to before we can move forward and develop the old schools, the new schools, or our vacant land. So. Um, I did support the school. I do support the school. I look forward to, the, to when the school opens up. I think it's going to be a great thing for the t citizens of the town of Abington to look forward to. And uh, I look forward to also hopefully forming some type of uh, investigative committee to find out what we can do with these buildings and our open spaces. Thank you. Rick, would you like maybe a question again? No, I, 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 I was very happy to support the school bond last year. Um, I think a new school, that, that, as proposed, it's going to be a tremendous boon for this town. I think uh, we're getting into a situation where if you're starting to look at a community to buy a house, you start to look at the schools, and you see that the, you know, all the towns around us had built new schools, but Abington hadn't. And I think that's, it's going to be a big draw and make Abington a, a really desirable community to have this wonderful facility that they're building. Um, but in terms of the tax rate, it is troubling. You're starting to hit kind of that uh, threshold that it, it's uncomfortable and while we need it to make sure we have the services to run the town it is starting to get to the point where you know there are a lot of people get uncomfortable with that number so the the number one thing you have to do is to start to bring in additional commercial development and you look at the areas where we can really handle it our town centers both of them are really underdeveloped I would argue that um, we can do more down there in terms of bringing in um, some investment to make sure that we have uh, some new businesses, some new life, some new energy. We also look at Route 18. There's a lot of space in Route 18 that still is not yet built out. Um, again, it gets back to the sewer issue where you can't do a lot because we don't have the capacity in our sewer system to sustain development. So that's why that has to become a top priority for the Board of Selectmen over the next year or so is to iron out that issue, however it is. Uh, finally, I think the town is doing the right thing by starting to work with the Southfield folks and looking at rezoning the Abington piece of land. Uh, it's been made clear that the golf course is never going to be built on Abington property. And so just having 
uh, recreational space, while I, I love recreational space, I think it's a great opportunity to start to look at how we can turn that into more of a commercial development area so the town gets some of that revenue back without really any of the drawbacks Could because the traffic will continue to go through the base, not out to 58. So uh, that would definitely be something we need to continue to push forward. Thank you. Uh, okay, Rick, what are your thoughts on the dog park proposal and also about Griffin's Dairy and the playing fields maintenance of it? What should be done with Griffin's Dairy Field? Sure. Um, I think the idea of the dog park at the sewer beds off Charles Street is a really fantastic idea, and I'm glad that the board is looking into this. Um, you know, not having a dog, I wasn't aware of the need for, you know, this type of facility, but uh, thanks to a lot of active interested uh, residents in the community this is now becoming kind of becoming an, an issue and uh, the idea of over the sewer beds where it's out of the way it's not going to um, harm any you know town environmental resources you already have open space it's connected to a rail trail that provides owners the opportunity to walk with their dogs as well um, I really looking forward to see if this is a, a good solution for it regarding D Griffin's Dairy um, this is one of those areas where um, I think people have a right to be disappointed that we don't have a solution yet, that the town has owned it for 18 years, and we still don't have a use plan. And uh, we don't have plans to seek funding for grants, and we still don't kind of have an idea of what we're going to do with the land. So I really want to make this a priority as well, that you know, by town meeting next year, we have a plan in place that we are going to move forward with. So we know if it's going to be walking trails, if it's going to be community garden plots, if it's going to be uh, you know, a wildlife sanctuary, if we're going to try to uh, make one really good premier field up there, athletic field up there. We really need to start to finalize this ish issue, figure out what we're going to do with it and start to move forward. Thank you, Rick. Bob, would you like me to? Really yes, please, please, no problem. What are your thoughts on the dog park proposal and also Griffin's Dairy, you know, in the playing fields and situation? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the dog park proposal is, is needed desperately. Uh, I don't know for all of us who like to walk the Ames Knoll property, I, I know you can find uh, many, many issues why you don't want to be walking the Ames Knoll property. So I think it's a great place for the people of this town to bring their dogs in a safe environment and be able to let them run around and do things. And like you, as Rick has pointed out, it's out of the way. It's not really going to hamper anybody. I think it's a benefit for the town to have a dog park. Um, I, I just, I, look forward to that development. I hope it's successful. I think it would be a very good place for the town to have. As far as Griffin Dairy is concerned, um, for as long as I've been in this town, that property has been available to do something with. Uh, I love the fact that we have community gardens up there for the, for the, for the people in the town to grow things. Um, I love the fact that, uh, at least for temporary purposes, the athletic fields will be developed up there for soccer programs, whatever other sport programs we have in the short term. Whether or not that's a permanent fix or not, I don't believe so. Um, I'd also like to see trail walking trails done, developed up there and I've always loved to have an open space area up there for our Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to have some place in town to maybe have an overnight and have a safe safe refuge to, to uh, practice what you need to practice to be a good scout whether you're a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout for outdoor activities. Um, so I too would like to see some form of formal formal plan as I know many residents would of what we're going to do with that property and I would look forward to working with whomever uh, in the future if, if voted a selectman to hopefully develop a plan that would make common and good sense for the town to utilize dairy, dairy's uh, Griffin's Farm. Thank you. Okay, Bob. Our legislature is working hard on the drug epidemic. Should the selectman be doing more? And if so, what? Um, I just want to point out the drug academic uh, is, is an academic and it's been prolific on the South Shore for many years and as many small groups and private interest groups have been involved in it it's very difficult um, for the town selectmen to make policy decisions on how we're going to handle abuse um, it's it starts with our police department and our police our police department that needs to address it that's not to say that the selectmen shouldn't have some say or some inclusion in how how we address the drug problem for the town of Abington um, I believe public interest is best served by bringing in speakers and bringing in people of knowledge uh, base to speak to the citizens of the town to tell us tell us about what processes are available for us to deal with this drug problem maybe from communities that have already successfully had, uh, had successfully attached or attacked that problem um, but I believe we do need support um, 
we do need to hear from people who have better knowledge than we do, and I believe the selectmen have a role in leading that charge to bring in the right information and provide the citizens of the town the right information about the drug abuse problem and how it should be handled. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, would you want me to read that? Sure. Um, this is an issue that I've had a, a, a long involvement with. Um, back when I was working for Senator Keenan's office, uh, he was named chairman of the Mental Health and Substance Abuse Committee, and so this became an issue that I was involved in pretty deeply, pretty quickly. And we spent a lot of time researching the issue and learning about possible solutions. And, and it's a really, I really take pride in knowing that a lot of those solutions have now become law in Massachusetts. And a lot of them are now being adopted, not just, um, not just in other states, but in, in nationally, that, that, that Congress is debating some of these issues that we initially researched through Senator Keenan's office. And I take a lot of pride in that. Um, so I know that there's, there's steps being taken nationally and, and on the state level for this issue, but I think there's still some things we can do as a town. Uh, for one, I think the most important thing we can do is education, making sure parents are aware of the root causes of a lot of this epidemic, which starts in the medicine cabinet, it starts in being overprescribed medications, um, making sure people realize that you know, these are dangerous drugs, these aren't just you know, super versions of Advil that um, they, they, they can't be just taken at a, at a whim, that the abuse potential is real. Once you start having this level of awareness, which hasn't existed until this really blossomed, that you're gonna start to, to cut off the path of future uh, people with, with addiction problems. Uh, the second thing that the town can really do is make sure that parents have a place they can turn to if they have a question about resources that are available for recovery. So that if I'm a parent and I need to know where I can bring a loved one that has a problem that I can go to, you know, maybe the town of Abington has a website that says you can call here or here, you can talk to this person, so that uh, those resources are at the fingertips. The third, the third way is um, I, I don't think police can arrest our way out of the situation, but I do believe that they have a role in making sure that Abington is not a, a, um, a highway for people to come into and and to make deals that we kind of sit kind of at a crossroads in a lot of communities and Abington has become a popular meeting place for, for um, illegal activities. And so I, I applaud the police and their aggressive crackdown on, um, on these folks that come into this community and, and I hope that continues as well. Thank you. These are just some of the issues that uh, we've been, I've been thinking of and Alex was answering and other people who have emailed me some of these questions. Are there any issues, Bob, you wanted to bring up? Um, we didn't discuss. Off the top of my head, the, the couple of things that bother me a lot um, is, uh, I know we just recently um, went from a uh, highway department to a DPW, and uh, I like, I'm, I'm very interested to see how that evolves as we uh, make that a uh, public service uh, in multiple ways. Um, and I think one of the issues I, I would like to address in this town are the conditions of the roads. Um, lately, I don't know if anyone drives around, but I, I know a lot of the side streets need some work. And I know that some of the sidewalks need some work, and um, one of my biggest issues uh, that I'd like to help with is addressing how we're going to find the funds to get some of these side roads and side streets ma uh, maintained. Um, speaking for myself, I'd like to see some improvements on Orange Street. So I, uh, I, I'm, I'm just looking at one street uh, in, a, in, a, in a small town, but there are a number of streets as you drive around town that are in subpar condition and need some improvement. And I, I do believe there's a schedule. Um, I'd just like to see what that schedule is and see what we can do to help modify that to make road improvements. Um, off the top of my head, we just recently had that very, very uh, bad accident uh, issue on uh, Randolph Street where the tree came down. And uh, I'm really not familiar with how the town of Abington is dealing with um, our tree warden and what he does for as, as far as investigative work and, and mobilize that. And it's not like I'm trying to bring up a hot issue, but I just think uh, I don't know much about the tree warden. I know I've been voting for tree wardens at the town elections every year. Uh, I'm not quite sure how, when, and why they're vested, how they get their money, what they do. Um, I think as a selectman, one of the things I'd like to get involved with is, because I'm an outdoor guy, I'd like to get involved with how, how and what we're doing uh, with the tree warden department and what we're doing as far as the conditions of uh, our abutting trees uh, up and down our, all of our streets in the town of Abington. Uh, those are two quick things off the top of my head. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, anything we didn't cover that you wanted to 
I think Bob raised a good uh, touch point, which is uh, the new DPW. I know one of the things I've been a little sad to hear was that when we had to rely on one of our businessmen in town to go and buy new slides for a couple of the playgrounds because they were broken because the town just either didn't have the the coordination or the, the resources to do that and so i hope that with um the new dpw commissioner that some of these some of these uh, community mechanic type things are going to start to be addressed you know broken playgrounds graffiti you know on public property broken fences that we can start to get some of these fixed i think the, i think people in the community see this and these are the sort of things where they ask themselves I'm, I'm paying this amount of taxes and i'm seeing this type of stuff in my local park i think it really bothers a lot of people the one thing we didn't touch that i have a particular interest in is the upcoming route 18 widening project um, i was a little disheartened to see that um, there hadn't been a community meeting held in abington on this topic and so we coordinated one through the planning board. And I still think there's some work to do. I think there's a lot of businesses and, and homeowners in this town that are gonna to be directly affected by this project. Um, and I think we need to make sure that we know what those impacts are going to be. If we're going, any businesses are going to uh, lose a significant amount of parking, if residents are gonna have trouble getting out of their driveways, I don't think we've um, done a good job identifying what some of those issues are. Um, the project needs to happen. We need to have uh, this widening take place. It's going to be a three-year project, which is going to have a tremendous impact on this community. And we just haven't had a great conversation about this yet. So um, if elected, this is something that's going to be a priority of mine is to make sure that we're prepared for this work coming down. Thank you. Uh, now about the closing statement from each candidate. Bob, well, since we started with Rick on the opening, we'll close with you starting. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to thank Alex Bizanson and Bob Toomey for putting this together for us. I uh, also want to thank my fellow candidate, uh, Rick Collins, for running for selectman. Uh, and um, I've been a public servant for over 30 years. I believe, uh, I strongly believe in public service. My dad raised me to make sure that I would give back to the community. And he always said to me, don't wait for the next guy because you can't count on them. You have to go do it yourself. So I've always, in my uh, over 20 years experience living in this town, tried to give back to this town in any way I can in any way I can support it. And I once again would like to try to do that by running for selectman and being elected as selectman for the town of Abington. Whether you elect Rick or me, the most important thing I could ask the citizens of the town to do is to come out and vote. Um, voting is the one, ish, one thing you can do to say I have a voice. And that voice is I choose to elect someone or I choose to make this decision on this question. Um, I only really, really wish that on April 30th, the citizens of this town come out hopefully in mass and, and vote at Emerald Hall. And when you vote, I would consider a vote for Robert Manning for selectman, and I would appreciate that, and thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Rick, closing statement. Again, thank you, Bob, for coordinating this. I really appreciate it, and I thank Bob Manning for running. He's, uh, and for all his service for the community, I know he spent a lot of years and a lot of time um, trying to make this a better place to live. And, and I need to remember to thank my wife, Rachel, for letting me run and for knowing that this is going to take time away from our family and but thinking that this was a good thing for not just our family but for the community as well um we i'm really glad that i moved to abington we uh you know we were when we were trying to figure out where to raise a family we looked at a number of communities and abington kept popping up as the place where we want to be and so we love our love abington we want to make this a great community for our family as it grows up and so I really appreciate any consideration that the voters can give on April on uh, on April 30th. Most important thing, as Mr. Manning said, was please do come out to vote. I think you have a good candidates in either of us. I do hope uh, people will give me a, a strong consideration as well, and I hope to see you at the polls on April 30th. Thank you very much. It's very important that you do take part in the electoral process. April 30th, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Emerald Hall. These candidates, uh, are, it's a non-paying job. They're given time, as Rick mentioned, away from his family, and Bob says the same thing, that if you're going to contribute back to the community, this is the way to do it. Uh, you know, these people have so much of their own time, and it's, it's so important for you to take a couple of minutes out of your own time to get these people into office. 
Um, while I have an audience here, we just wanted to mention the Abington Food Pantry. Please keep them in mind. A lot of people during the spring and summer uh, tend to forget donating to the Abington Food Pantry. Uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you both for, for the time you've given already into the town and for the time you will give in the future. Uh, in particular, I want to thank Justin Shanahan for coordinating the cable portion of this to make sure that we can broadcast it to the public. So again, April 30th, 8 a.m., 6 p.m., Emerald Hall. Thank you very much.